India also says it wants to buy as much Iranian oil as it can. So what is the point of the EU embargo if Iran can just so easily find other buyers? Well, to be uh, clear, Rory, this is not in favor of European interests, what we are doing there with this uh, stupid and senseless and also wrong embargo. And uh, what we clearly see is that this happens upon Washington's wishes. So we have a few countries, Greece in the forefront with 25% of its overall oil imports in 2010 coming from Iran. But then we have Italy with 13, Spain with 10%, Germany next to nothing with 1.9 billion barrels per year. So uh, this is just, uh, I think, 1-2% of our overall imports. So in, in this uh, regard, some of the Europeans have even problems fulfilling the embargo. Italy got uh, a total exemption because they are not uh, you know, paying cash to Iran, but Iran is paying its debts to Italy by delivering oil, so that will continue anyway is exempted from the whole embargo. Uh, Greece has a special time. Uh, their frame, uh, their main focus is not going on the oil embargo, it's going on their uh, bloody debt crisis. So we do have a lot of European, uh, mostly homemade problems. Now, in addition to that, we have problems with this uh, oil embargo. And as we see on the other hand, um, uh, Iran will do, I just spoke to, uh, to some Iranian friends, Iran will do quite well even under the embargo. Uh, that will uh, also lead to nothing much. Uh, we have heard the uh, gold um, and the rumors and uh, we know that you know, all the present faithful customers to Iran oil are set, like Russia, China, India and many others too, uh, to continue buying this oil and they will find a way, rest assured, this is what the signal I get from Tehran. Can I mean, let's, just, let's just get this straight here. As you're suggesting, this is a, essentially a part of a Europe uh, kowtowing to Washington's wishes here. Uh, you know, Washington saying that an embargo on Iranian oil will cripple the Iranian economy. Here we have, as you were saying, that this embargo will severely hurt the European Union economy. Do you, do you think the EU recognizes that cheaper and vaster quantities of Iranian oil will now go to two of the leading economies in the world, that of China and India? They are very well aware of it. I was personally present when the uh, deputy uh, economics minister of Iran was talking to uh, you know, foreign society here in Berlin. And the gentleman said very openly to the shocked audience that, OK, you don't want to buy our goods where well, the Chinese will do. So that's, that's what you know, happened in that situation, that there was you know, a blasting silence in the group. And uh, I think everybody here is aware. So we have another minister's meeting in May, scheduled in May. That was already you know, fixed uh, when they fixed the decision of the embargo itself. So maybe in May, um, you know, we have some kind of reversal. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not very sure. In any case, what we will have, and that is very serious, the military side of it. So we had two air fleet uh, um, aircraft carrier groups uh, passing into the Persian Gulf. That is a serious story because from another ship, a uh, helicopter carrier, in this group, attacks are flown on uh, Iran. And, it, you know, I'm, I'm so were, sorry to interrupt. You know, I do apologize. We're running very, please. very low on time here. As you say, there's an international presence uh, building up in the, in, in the Arabian Gulf there. French, uh, American, yeah. Israeli ships as well going in as well. If I may very briefly here, um, Israel said recently that though Iran continues to improve its nuclear capabilities, it's not actually building nuclear weapons. The IAEA didn't present any proof that Iran's nuclear program has a military slant. Why Correct. do the U.S. and Europe continue to pressure Iran? I think they do that for home consumptions. I think they are in any case, you know, building a propaganda case to, you know, pacify their home populations. Nobody in the world believes that the last report from IAEA was in any way correct. It was based on rumors, on false uh, and fabricated uh, documents. And uh, I was there in Vienna when the director general presented his paper and uh, he said, well, we thought, you know, the, the pressure from this uh, nuclear program is building, so we filed this report. 
And in fact, uh, like this, he explained why he was using all this bad information, which El Baradei, his predecessor in this job, uh, very wisely had never used. So this is, this is the situation we have with this fake report, a bad report, a damaging report, and a report which makes you know uh, steps by the US against Iran more likely, but this is all show. The real thing is, America's under high pressure, it's, it's bankrupt in a way, they need more billions of dollars to be generated in, as a steady flow uh, in trade. This is, you know, in fact being damaged by this embargo. This is why it is really utterly stupid, even from the US uh, viewpoint of interests. So for, for this kind of situation right now, we have in fact military pressure building on Iran and what they want is regime change. This is what they say. This is not about oil, it's not about about a nuclear program. It's about regime change. They want a regime which is doing Washington's wishes. That is all. And whatever means they can throw in, uh, somehow desperate this time because of the bankruptcy of both uh, the European system and the American system, that is the situation we face. We face this urgency from the West and it's not based on you know facts or solid policy or wise uh, counsel. It's based on hectic affairs. As you say, economic warfare, military pressure in, in the region, ultimately, uh, ultimately all of it boiling down to that of uh, regime change. Uh, Christoph Horstel, government consultant and political analyst, I wish we had more time. We don't. Uh, thank you for coming on RT today.